Are you going through adversity right now and it's just tough? Like, it just sucks, right? Sometimes it just feels as if there's no way out, that you've worked so hard for a moment and it all comes crashing down. Have you ever wondered like, what's the point? Why am I going through this? What's my purpose? Why is God bringing me through this situation? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you three keys to an unorthodox approach, a different type of approach to going through and overcoming those challenging moments. That obstacle, that roadblock, whether it's your parents just got a divorce, whether it's you're getting cut from the team and you spent your entire life playing that sport. It could be just feeling anxious, feeling depressed. It could be you losing a job, you breaking up with the person that you love so much. The list goes on and on and all of us deal with adversity and challenges in different ways. We have different backgrounds, we have different context. We have different perspectives and ways in which we approach adversity and we approach the world day to day. But if you're a faith-driven individual, someone who believes in Jesus Christ, someone who believes that God has a calling over your life and you're exploring that, then there's a greater calling and a greater reason and a mission that you and I don't need, need to fully understand, we don't fully understand, but what I would implore you and empower you to do is approach adversity and approach challenge in your life, not in the way that the world tells us to approach, and I did that for a very long time, but do it in a different way, a way that God has for us, because in that is when we can truly discover our purpose. I mean, I've worked with hundreds of athletes and adults and business people, owners, executives, and everybody deals with this. Everybody comes to a point where we're at a crossroads of how are we gonna continue approaching life? Are we gonna approach life in the way the world wants us to approach, which only ever leads to anxiety, um, feeling uncertain, never having like that like overwhelming sense of peace, never living up to our full calling and potential. No, much, no matter how much we force our way to success, we're always having that feeling inside of our gut that we, we like there's something missing, or we're gonna go down that path that God has for us, and that's truly having faith and believing that what he says is true, that there is a future, that there is something amazing for us, and we just have to take the next step. I'm sitting here on this treadmill and just bringing this point home. Like we just have to take the next step. We don't need to know what's five steps or 10 steps or 20 steps down the road, and that's where a lot of the anxiety comes rushing in. And we're going through these difficult moments as we're peeking too far into the future. All we need to do is take the next step. Don't quit. Don't, don't give up. Maybe you, maybe you do have to change course a little bit. Maybe the path you are on isn't the path that's ultimately gonna set up your future success. We don't know. But I wanna talk you guys through three, three keys of how I'm choosing to approach adversity in a different way because I mean, these last eight years, building my various businesses, failing multiple times, and being in a difficult place right now, today, right now, being in a very difficult place. You know, I'm not the type of coach, I coach others, I, I motivate others and inspire others, but that doesn't mean I'm perfect. I go through my own stuff too. I have my own struggles, my own obstacles too, personally, battling anxiety, battling depression, battling financial struggle, battling, you know, marriage hurdles, I mean, the list goes on and on, but I wouldn't want it any other way, and you shouldn't want it any other way either. We should be stepping into those moments with a smile and a peace that covers, covers us because we're growing. It'd be so much easier for you to lay down and let the world and let life happen to you. It'd be so much easier. You'd have so much less anxiety. You'd have so much less worry. You'd have so much less confusion if you're just showing up to life every day passively. But if you show up to life actively, actively pursuing your highest potential, the, the highest regard that God has for you, he's going to push us through and pull us through and sometimes drag us through 
moments in our life where we don't know what else to do. And that's the point, is having faith in Him because we can't get us through, only He can. The first thing that we have to do when we're going through extreme difficulty of some sorts, and it doesn't have to just be something that's extremely difficult and traumatic. It could be something so small, like, like a friend of ours, you know, we're going through a tiff with, a, girlfriend and boyfriend of ours that we're going through a tiff with. It could be getting a bad grade on a paper. It could be losing some money. It could be whatever. It doesn't have to be something huge. It could be something small. But the first thing we have to do is pray, okay? The world will tell us, all of us, to just smack adversity in the face and just go hard and, and you got this and just, you know, with this rah, rah, rah. And I sit here and like realized, and I'm 30 years old now, I've had various businesses in my 20s. Many have you know, started, were successful, some failed. I mean, I'm at a point now where pretty much every business that I've started has come to a standstill because, because of that mentality of the go, go, go. And it only ever leads to burnout, only ever leads to overwhelming anxiety. So the first thing to do when you're going through these challenges is pray. The, the ultimate creator, orchestrator, the being, the one that knows exactly what their plan is for you, that knows the, the, the amount of hairs on your heads can count them, knows exactly what you're gonna to do tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, if you stay aligned with him, who knows exactly where you're going. He knows. Pray to him. And the word it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I was just talking to an athlete last week about this because she's a junior in college and struggling mentally and struggling with soccer and might want us to stop playing soccer and focus on her future, but she doesn't know what her future is. So now she's in between and now there's all this anxiety and she's not sure what to do. And there's all this uncertainty and there's no real intentionality that she can even have because she's so unclear of what she even wants to do. And I told her, I'm like, give it to God. First thing you have to do is start journaling pray and meditate and say, God, I don't know what, you, what I have for me. I don't really know what I'm doing, but you do. God, I don't even know how this whole thing works, but you do. I'm just trying to make it to the next day, let alone the next week. God, but you know. So when you're, when you're struggling with some type of adversity, difficulty, obstacle in your sports journey, and your personal journey, the first thing to do is pray. Give it to him. Give it to him. Go down on your knees, say, God, I'm struggling. I need help. Financially, emotionally, mentally, everything, physically, God, help me. And what you'll discover is when you're consistent in that, for what I've discovered, is when you're consistent in that, a, an overwhelming amount of peace comes over you. And when it comes to performing, whether it's in your sport, in your academics, in your professional life, what happens is an overwhelming amount of peace and strength comes over you that is unexplainable. It might not be overnight, it might not be in an hour, it could be. Sometimes he works fast, but it might not be for a week or a month. But when you pray, you're giving the being that has all power. You're inviting him and saying, and saying, I want you, I, I want you in this with me. See, Christianity and the Bible and God and Jesus Christ is not a religion and boxes to check. It is a relationship that you build through consistent devotion and communion with him. So when you're struggling in your athletic journey, struggling with maybe identity loss, struggling with not really sure what you're gonna do. Maybe you were performing really well and now your performance crashed and you might get cut from your team, you might lose your contract, you might lose your opportunity. Get consistent in devotion to God. Get consistent in giving Him permission to come in and, and, and work through you because He wants a relationship with you and I. And when you pray to God through adversity, it doesn't make you soft. It makes you fierce. Because you have the creator of the universe who wants to see you thrive. 
be successful, accomplish your dreams, align with your calling, walk the path that he has for you. But you have to commit to the process of humility that you don't have it all figured out and neither do I and we don't need to because God our Father is on our side. Push through, pray to him and trust in his plan and watch doors open that you didn't even know, didn't even know that were possible. This world wants to shut you up, shut you down, make you feel incapable, make you feel weak, make you feel out of control. That should piss you off and it pisses me off too. That the enemy that is the devil, that people that wanna have control over you, that energy that wants to bring you down thinks that it can have dominion over you when you have the blood of Jesus Christ living inside of you. That should, make, that should make you upset, that should make you sad, that should make you angry enough to get pissed off and angry enough to push back and say, nah, I got God on my side. <laughs> you can try to push me down, but I got God on my side. You can try to talk behind my back, I got God on my side. You can try to tell me I'm incapable, I got God on my side. You can try to bench me, I got God on my side. You can try to bankrupt me, I got God on my side. You can try to wish for my downfall, I got God on my side. And that's the mentality you have to have when you're going through adversity. The second thing you have to do is you have to take action by slowing down. We can't sprint our way through the marathon that is life. Sometimes we have to take a step back and reflect on our progression and reflect on how far we've really come and reflect on everything that's brought us to this moment and how it can define us for the future. Sometimes you gotta slow down. Sometimes you gotta pump the brakes in order to accelerate. Sometimes you gotta walk through the valley of the shadow of death before you can climb and jump and sprint and praise God for everything that he's brought you through. It's the steady stream that carves canyons. It's the steady consistency that will move mountains for you. So the first thing is revisit your goals. Why did you get into this in the first place? What are your goals and are they big enough? Are you dreaming big enough? Are you truly reaching for your highest potential? Or are you taking a step back and saying, nah, I wanna be comfortable. When you're setting a big goal, it should scare you. That's the point of your life and my life, as we have one life to live and one shot at this opportunity to become everything that God's created us to be, your goals have to be big enough to fit into that vision. You have to revisit your goals. What are you doing and why? It's okay, it's okay to take a step back sometimes. It's okay to slow down sometimes. You can't fail if you don't quit. That's it. Number two, take a two to three hour nature break. Get out in nature, go for a walk, whether it's a beach, whether it's a forest, whether it's, whether it's getting out on a kayak, whether it's going for a drive. Sometimes I like going for a drive. Take a two to three hour nature break. Get out and see the world at a higher level. See things for truly what they are. When the pressure is surmounting and it feels like you can't come through, sometimes you need to take a step back. Go, through, go to nature and see God's create, creativity and his creation and his beauty and his majesty throughout the world. Take a nature break. Sometimes we gotta take breaks, guys. Sometimes we gotta slow it down a little bit. We can't just sprint our way through. We have a big vision. It might take 10 to 20 years. You can't sprint for 10 to 20 years. But you can develop a consistency that can last forever. Number three, establish a vision. Establish a vision for your life. A big vision. And don't bottle up your vision to fit anybody else's comfortability. 
The vision for your life should make other people feel uncomfortable. If you're in college right now, you're a sophomore you're for, or a junior, you want to know what to do for the rest of your life, you want to discover your purpose, what job you'll work, if you'll start a business, whatever it is, sit down and create a vision for your life. Where do you want to live? How much money do you want to make? How do you want to spend your time? What's your perfect day look like? What's your perfect week look like? What's your spouse like? What is she or what is he like? What are your kids like? What do you want to drive? How, what type of house do you want to live in? Your vision is your vision. But make a big enough vision for your life where, where you can sit back and say, man, if it is God's will and he makes this happen, then I know it was God and it wasn't me. Your vision should, should, should be so big that there's no way that just you can make it happen. There would have to be God. There would have to be, or, it would have to be ordained. It would there would have to be supernatural power moving through you to make that happen. Create that vision for your life and don't put it in a box. That vision should be so big it makes other people around you uncomfortable. Your vision for your life should be so big that it makes you uncomfortable. Your vision should be so big that other people will, 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 will feel insecure around you and say, man, he's, he's crazy or she's crazy for even thinking that. They'll never accomplish that. They'll never do that. That's been the story of my entire life up until now. And I only feel like I'm just getting started because I know the vision that God has for me. It's been clear. It's been clear. Whether it was me in high school and teachers and kids telling me you would never play college football. You'll never play college football. Yeah, all right, play college football. Whether it was kids in college saying, man, you'll never go start a business. You'll never go accomplish that. Man, you'll always be like that. You'll always be the angry one. You'll always be the one crazy one. Graduated college, I became the more wise one. I became the more mature one. I started my own business. Started, 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 all, started other businesses. Try to create the future for myself. Failed businesses. Oh man, you'll never be successful. Oh, you know, we're out. We're gonna go do this. You know, that that'll never work. Okay, that's great. But the vision that God has for me, when I align on His path, I know that He will work through. What is it for you? How big can your vision be? What can you accomplish in the time that you have here on earth? Think about that. Think about that. And the last thing, when you're taking action by slowing down, guys, create a one year, one year down to a daily action plan. You create this big grand vision for your life and you break it down into bite-sized pieces that starts with one year down to every day. What do you want to accomplish this next year? What do you want to accomplish these next 12 months? How are you going to 10X in the next 12 months? How are you going to do something so amazing and so great in one year? Because one year can change your life. What do you want to accomplish in one year to change the trajectory of your entire life? The only way that you're going to be able to accomplish that is by taking that one year action plan and breaking it down into day by day by day by day daily actions. Taking one step every day, building back up to a year. The word says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You wait for the Lord by taking action every day and waiting for the result. You wait on the Lord for it all to make sense for it all to come together by taking daily action every single day. You do that, you'll mount up with wings like eagles. Think about that for a second. If you had wings like eagles, you're above everything. You're the highest flying bird in the sky. You can see the whole vision. You can see everything happening. You can go to an atmosphere and a level higher than any other bird if you're an eagle. Everything else is below you, nothing is above you when you mount up with wings like eagles. And how do you get there in your life? In your sports career? In your professional career? You do it by waiting on the Lord. Well, how do I wait on the Lord? You take action without trying to figure out what the end result's gonna be. You just do what feels right today. You check the, you, you stack the daily small wins today. You get the things done that you said you were gonna get done today, today. Do that every single day day and wait for God to work through that plan. And that's how you'll mount up on wings like eagles. 
That's how you take action, by slowing it down. Slow it down. Take action, slow it down. You go through adversity, slow it down. You take action. Number three, I'm gonna overcome adversity and dominate it. Share it with somebody who's not gonna show you pity. You're going through adversity, you're down, you're hurting, you feel unfulfilled, you feel like you wanna give up and quit, you feel like this is too much pressure, you feel like this is gonna be the hardest thing that you go through, you feel like you wanna do something else, this is what you set yourself up for. This is what you dream when you were five years old, seven years old, nine years old, 11 years old. And now you're 20, 23, 28, 30. You wanna give up now? You wanna stop now. It got really, really, really freaking hard. And you wanna stop now. Share this with somebody who's not gonna show you pity. Share this with somebody who's gonna hold you accountable to the fact that this was everything that you said that you wanted. Number one, this specific type of person has to be someone who's already doing the type of thing that you want to be doing. Stop sharing this with everybody around you. You're going through adversity, you might not need to tell mom. You're going through adversity, you might not need to tell dad. You're going through adversity, don't go run to your boyfriend or girlfriend. You're going through adversity, you don't have to go to your coworker, your co-classmate, your co-teammate, unless they're already doing the thing that it is that you, that, that you want to do. Why? Because they're going to put their own biases, their own limitations, their own thoughts, their own insecurities on your problem. They don't need to know. Not everybody needs to know. A very select few or even one person needs to know. You tell that person. Why? Because that person doesn't hold you to the standard that you set for yourself and remind you you were made for more. You were created for more. You're not just an athlete. You're not just a professional. You're not just a mom. You're not just a dad. You're not just in anything. You were created in the perfect image of Jesus Christ. You're good. You're great. You're faithful. You're humble. You're kind. You're diligent. You're persistent. You care for others and you love others. The strongest of them all. You don't give up now. You go share this with somebody. Share, yes, share it with somebody. You're going through trouble, you're sad, you're depressed, you're anxious, you might feel like you wanna take your own life. Go share this with somebody. But don't share it with somebody who's just gonna show pity for you because you're gonna end up regretting and building resentment for the situation because you want someone to push you. You want someone to lift you up and empower you and say, hey, you got it. You can do this. And remember those times? And also this person should be driven by faith, purpose, and discipline. This person should be living, walking the walk with faith, with purpose, with discipline. Why? Because they're gonna give that to you. Their energy, their vibe, their words, their mindset. If they're filling up their cup with those things, it's gonna overflow onto you. So when you're sharing your trials, your tribulations, your troubles, your demons, your traumas, with that type of person who lives their life by faith, by purpose, by discipline, walks the walk, they're gonna overflow onto you. And that's why God fills us, us up with his spirit. That's why God fills us with him. Because if we're faithful for the, faithful with the, with the process that he's given us, we can overflow onto others. So when you get through this trial or tribulation that you don't think that you can handle, that feels like you wanna, like it's gonna crush you, you go tell somebody that's going to hold you accountable to the standard that you want to be held accountable to. Don't hide. Don't quit. Don't stay in bed. Don't turn your phone off. Don't go away. Show up. Show up. Show up. Show up. Show up. And tell that person, hey, I need help. And that person will put their arm around you. Maybe they'll put your, their, your arm around them and say, I got you. I got you for a little while. I got you for a little while. But soon I'm going I'm to push you off the ledge again and you're going to have to fly. That's what you need. That's what's going to push you through. That's what's going to make you better. Not just lifting weights. 
not just go into the field. Wake up. There's more to this process. You need that mental, emotional, spiritual discipline, that growth, that evolve, that will evolve you for the rest of your entire life. God said, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is unwilling to work, let him not eat. He didn't say, if anyone's unwilling to work, show pity on them, give them some food. You know, show them, show them, hey, it's okay that you don't want to work. You're, you're okay, we got it. No, no, he said, if they don't want to work, let them not eat. Because you're gonna have to stand up and get to work. You're gonna have to stand back up. You want to eat? You're gonna have to get back up and get to work. Stop complaining, stop whining. Stop going off the deep end. You got trauma? You got troubles, struggles you don't think you can get through? You go share it with somebody. You go work through, through it with a professional. You go find that help. And you get to work. Don't lay down to die, get to work. This life ain't easy. My dreams and visions are so freaking big. So big. I want to give my family a life that, that is unimaginable. I want my great, great, great grandkids to watch videos like, like these and say, man, yo, great, great, great grandpa D, Yo, he was that guy. I want buildings with our last name on them. I want charities with our last name on them. I want to make real impact in this world. I want to be able to fund my great, great, great grandsons or great, great, great granddaughter's dreams. I want to be able to fund that and see them through in that. When I'm long gone, the legacy that I'm going to leave. You don't think it gets hard? You don't think there's times I want to give up? I mean, when I'm looking at bank accounts and I'm seeing $200,000 of debt, when I'm looking at credit cards that are maxed out and I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna get through. You don't think it doesn't get hard? But I show up, I show up, I show up. Over the last 13 years and every single time God's come and said, good job, good job, you were faithful. Good job, let me open this door for you. Let me give you this opportunity now. Let's level you up again. Let's level you up again. Remember that time, remember that time, remember that time? You gotta give 110%, everything, everything that you got, every muscle fiber, every thought, every neural connection that is, is in your body. You gotta give it all, guys. You gotta give it all, you gotta give it all, you gotta give it all, you gotta give it all. Don't give up, level up. Don't give up, level up. Don't give up, level up. Your story ain't over, your game ain't over, it ain't all over, your life ain't all over. You need to, you need to level up. Don't give up, level up. You said you wanted this. You said you wanted to be great. You said you wanted to go accomplish that dream. You said you wanted to go accomplish that vision. You said you wanted to do great things. Don't get comfortable, don't get complacent. And so what, you make some mistakes? You make some mistakes that's your fault like I have? And you're alone again? And you're down bad again? You got one or two options. You give up and have pity on yourself and tell yourself, I'm no good. I'll never be good enough. I'm done. Why me? Why me? Woe is me. Cry me a freaking river. Or you can turn and say, hey, the circumstance is the circumstance. And I will control what I can control. The circumstance is the circumstance. And I will control what I can control. It is what it is. But I'm going to go get to it. Because this isn't the end of my story. It's just the end of the page. But I got a long book to write. And I ain't done, ever, until I'm not breathing no more. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow.